My name's James, I'm a 16 year old from a small village just outside of Cardiff and here's how I ended up becoming an expert on Man United on African TV for six months. It's the 19th of March 2018 and I get a random Skype message off an account called Premier League Fan Zone that I've never heard of before. The only reason I'm seeing this message in the first place because I've got the day off because it's snowed it down, so I'm not in school. So I'm gonna be honest with you, right? When they're sending me these messages that are sort of like pissing about, we're only really taking it seriously. And all of a sudden they were like, oh, can we can we test your connection? And I was like, well, hang on a minute, a connection. Um, for some of our older viewers, that's just it made me think of that song by uh, Elastica, you can do the introduction in your head, I'm not gonna do it. Uh, anyway, uh, so they're, they're testing my connection and all of a sudden, right, I seriously think it's just like my mates pissing about. And then like, uh, do you wanna be on the show, 3.30 UK time? And this is like, hang on, like, what is, what is this? Right, I didn't know what it was. Uh, and I, I Googled the show and uh, I, find out, I find out it's like uh, the Premier League's own TV channel, uh, which is like distributed in around like 70 countries worldwide. Uh, they've got their own like uh, calling show called Premier League Fan Zone, which is what the, the account was. And it's similar to sort of 606, that sort of thing, but like a, a 21st century version on telly. And it's got all sorts of people that you've kind of forgotten about that used to be on telly in the UK in the sort of early to late 2000s, the likes of Manish from the Football League show, uh, sort of pundits that have been washed up on there, like uh, Kerbishly. Remember when he used to actually be a Premier League manager instead of just being uh, contended for the next West Ham job. Anyway, uh, so this went on. Um, we we're talking about connection, and um, this bloke starts talking on the, on the Skype call. So he's calling me. Skype call goes off, and uh, he's like, "Hi, James." I'm like, "All right." And he's like, uh, um, "Do you want to be on the show 3:30 UK time?" And I'm like, "All right, yeah." And so that happened. And I was still thinking at this point, right? This is a good wind-up by someone who's got a day off, so it's wind me up. Anyway, two hours later, I get a Skype call, and uh, it's the same account, and I answer it, and uh, all of a sudden it's like um, Alex Scott, and I think like Matthew Edmonton or someone like that, and uh, she goes, "Oh, we've got." Uh, James in Lagos, Nigeria, and I'm like, at this point, right, I'm trying to, like, not to piss myself laughing, it's like, Lagos, Nigeria, right? A bit like when I go on Gaz's radio show and I'm from Withenshaw, even though I've got no relation to it whatsoever. I'm um, from, like, Lagos doing this, and it's like, well, hang on a minute, like, why am I from Lagos? It's brilliant. Um, and, like, the furthest you can get from being someone from Lagos, and I see my face on this, like, massive, like, TV screen talking about um, Rashford's goal against Liverpool, because it was, like, two seasons ago when he scored it. And uh, it was brilliant. I was just trying not to piss myself at this because it's just stupid. It's like I appeared at the bottom of the screen. It was like James, uh, Lagos, Nigeria. Brilliant. Anyway, so you're thinking this is the end. Surely someone's realised like, he's full of shit. Him. He's not from Lagos. Look at him. He's like pale ginger. Uh, so this happened. And then um, one of the producers contacted me on Skype and uh, he was like, we need to move your uh, location. And I was like, uh, <laughs> why is that? And he's like, uh, cause it's, it's clear you're not from uh, Lagos, Nigeria. So I was like, okay, where? Where do you want to put me then? And he uh, suggested um, Cape Town. I was from Cape Town in South Africa for a show. Uh, and then it changed to Toronto. And so uh, for the next six months, I was from uh, Toronto, Canada, because uh, not only was it shown in Africa, it was sort of a global show. So um, it was shown kind of all over the world, sort of broadcasters that wanted to pick it up would show it. Uh, so it was on like in Canada, US, Africa, parts of Asia. Uh, so I was from Toronto, Canada. And uh, this went on seriously now, I'm not taking a piss, this went on for six months and it took over my life. Like literally, I was getting messages in school, like, and I'd have to like run to the toilets, do a test call, peg it home for 3.30 when the show started. And it was brilliant, I was talking to like uh, Robbie Savage. It's James, how are you? I'm all right, how are you? Listen James, 20 seconds to make your point, go. Right, this ain't a point, it's a question, but there's an academy graduate that came through the same academy that you did, the class of 92. He's got a book out at the moment and he had an injury and his name's Ben Thornley. Before he had the injury, was he the best player in that squad? Was he better than Skulls? And would you say, as a natural ability, he was the best player in that team before he had the injury? Oh, I think he can both. Yeah, can both. So that, I'd say yeah. that the answer would be yes before his injury. I thought he was... Was he the best player in our, in our class of 92 team, Robert? I tell you what, Ben Thorny, I thought I thought there was three. Ben Thorny, Keith Gillespie, Nicky Butt, um, Giggs. But Giggs, he wasn't really, he was more trained no. with the first team. But Ben yeah. Thorny, James, you're right, he had such ability, you know, um, a low sense of gravity, yeah. he could glide past players. You had Ben Thorny on one wing, you had Keith Gillespie on the other, Nicky Butts runs from field. I would say Ben Thorny was up there, but I would have said probably Nicky Butt. Would Ben Thornley have played football for United? I think he would have, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. I, I thought he would have. Uh, the injury, he lost that yard of pace. He, he, he had to obviously bulk up. And uh, 
great lad, but just unfortunately he didn't make the grade. Yeah, yeah. Hey, James, thank you for that. Good James, call. good call. Leroy was senior. Which manager would you like managing your club? If it wasn't Jose, would it be Jurgen or would it be Mauricio? Uh, it'd be neither of them. I'd go for either Kieran McKenna or uh, Mottarik. Yeah, but that wasn't the question. <laughs> I love your style, James. So, I love your style. Let me ask that question again. Would it be Jurgen or would it be Mauricio? It'd be Pochettino. Okay. Oh. I, I, I thought I thought he was going to say. He just couldn't say a Liverpool say manager's Jürgen. name. It's just not something that's come out of his couldn't. Why would I say Klopp? Why would I say Klopp? I mean, I, I think he's, he's so overrated. I mean, look at look at he's no Liverpool, right? His football, all right, it's attractive. What has he won, right? He's got to a league, he's got to a league cup final. Did he win that? He got to a Europe League final. Did he win that? No, exactly. He has won nothing at Liverpool. Nothing. So you wouldn't want him at Manchester United. No, I don't want him at United. He's a Liverpool manager. And if he came to United, he'd just be like, why? They'd probably be like, you know, sort of going, you know, what is he doing here? And also, I think he's overrated. He's won nothing at Liverpool. What's really won at United? He's won a Europa League and he's won a League Cup. Things Klopp failed to do. Yeah, but James, they're, they're better than Man United, though, aren't they? According to who? Oh, have they finished? Have they finished a fight in the league? Actually, in the clock, <laughs> James, do you think do you think at the moment Manchester United are better than Liverpool? Well, yeah, honestly, I do. No, J- James, I come on! Like all these big pundits, like seriously, um, and it was just getting a bit out of hand at one point. Like I remember I had my GCSE results day, and uh, I, flew, I flew in from Spain to get them early, and uh, instead of going out with my uh, many friends that I have. I uh, decided to stay in and talk about Fred on that show he just signed. Uh, so, and that that summer holiday specifically, I was on it every day for like two weeks. It was it was ridiculous, and I kind of became this like mini celebrity in like Africa. And um, I used to get like messages all the time from like uh, people in Nigeria asking for jobs in the UK. <laughs> uh, so this went on for ages. This is how mad it all is, right? I'm in my room uh, arguing with Robbie Savage and Phil Neville, and it's like 3:45 on a Tuesday afternoon. And my mates are like in the local co-op or whatever, like buying like a Mars bar or whatever. And I'm there like talking on African telly for six months. It was just crazy. Like I was like, hang on, I'm doing my GCSEs here. Bit of context. And uh, I'm just like running home and going on African telly. And like after a few weeks, everyone was like, oh yeah, it's just, just James. He does Af- just, he's just on African telly. So what do you mean he's on African telly? Oh, yeah, he's just, just talking to, just talking on African telly, isn't he? There's even times I confused or upset Robbie Savage when uh, we were talking about, um, he asked me an off, off-piece question. He was like, oh, would you take Rooney back? And then I asked him, I was like, what now? Or when he was playing? And obviously you could hear someone had had a word with him in his ear and he like froze for about a tenth of a second and was like, oh, sorry, stupid question, mate. Sorry, I apologise for that. Uh, so there was a couple of instances like that. You know, on the whole, like people actually like me that were that, that working there at that time. Uh, like, I mean, um, I got a couple of good messages off the people that left the show when I was working on it. But it reached a peak, right, when uh, I told one of the producers I was going to um, United against Juventus, I think, in the Champions League, and uh, I got a message from one of them saying, um, like, they were, seriously, they were, I'm not bullshitting now. Uh, they were like, um, can we get your pitch side, please, before the game? And I was like, oh, what? Hang on. And uh, it never happened for a number of reasons, but there were loads of times they tried to get me in their actual studio because they were based in London and uh, that's where they sold the programmes abroad. But it never happened. I got messages off Leroy Senior's agent, uh, so people don't know who that is. I uh, used to play for Chelsea, former Torquay manager, asking me if I could come in and do a piece for him. It never happened. But uh, it reached a bit of, that was, that was sort of when it reached its climax. And then after that, it was kind of hard to improve on that. Uh, I think it was pretty incredible that no one, I think someone must have complained surely after like a few months, it's like he's not from Toronto, is he? But I still get messages now, like uh, people that I've been on that show with that send me stuff like, how's Toronto? And I'm like, mate, I don't live there, I never have done. Um, <laughs> but uh, like the thing is, right, I get I get added to these random like group chats as well on WhatsApp, like Man United like, fan group or whatever, and they think I'm some sort of like expert pundit I've been on like African TV or whatever, which is interesting. Not that I agree with any of their opinions on the club. Unfortunately, uh, this did eventually come to an end uh, after one of the producers. Uh, it'd, been, it'd been a while, it, a storm had been brewing, essentially, because um, Peter Schmeichel had him on as a guest, and I was a, I was a bit pissed off they didn't ask me to come on. They had like two United fans in India, and one of them didn't know who he was, and they had like four Arsenal fans on, which is annoying. Anyway, so uh, I, I, I complain about that, but when I knew this was up, 
I think they must have got a new producer in or something because um, I sent a message asking if I could come on and uh, they sent a message back saying, sorry, our, um, our producer knows you're, in the, you, you're a UK based now. He only wants it to be people from abroad only. So uh, that's when I think it was finished. When it ended as well, they didn't just say, all right, yeah, you've had your fun now, stop. Uh, <laughs> one of the producers of the show actually went to the lengths of blocking me on his own personal Instagram account because uh, I don't know why he did that. Uh, and uh, also, I think I'll probably uh, ruin the chance of ever working for that company. With the confidence that Manchester United have coming off the back of getting into the FA Cup final, I don't think there's any, any stopping them as well, James. Um, yeah, I totally agree, really. I think, you know, United should be able to beat Arsenal. You know, uh, United actually are unbeaten against Arsenal in the last five games against Arsenal at Trafford. And Arsenal this season away from home have been really poor, you know, mm -hmm. They've, um, they've lost something like, is it four or five on the bounce this year? And, you know, away from home, that is. And they just don't really look, they don't look like a good team away from home. They look like a different team to the one that plays at the Emirates. And I think, you know, hopefully, we've seen against Sevilla and we've seen against West Brom where we've beaten these big teams. We just can't move on and beat the so-called, no disrespect for those teams, the easier teams after mm. the big games we've played. And I hope Mourinho's brought into the side that it's important that we can beat, you know, you can beat the Tottenham's. You can, yeah beat your man's sissies, but you've got to win these other games and they're equally as important.